Praise the Lord, saints. Good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to the King's Road broadcast. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central Time, United States of America. The 8th of February today. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. Wow. Brought us to the 8th of February. <laughs> <laughs> He'll carry us on through the rest of the month, I'm sure. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes. By His mighty grace and love and mercy. It's cold morning today, about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's pretty chilly. But we got our wood stove burning, so yeah. we're good, and we're nice and toasty. Amen? Amen. Have and we hope you are too. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today for another day to proclaim your truth, to energize your people, Lord, by your spirit. You are the one who does it, Lord. Energize us today, Lord. Fill us with your purpose. Fill us with your love. Fill us, O God, with your awesome testimony. Hallelujah. With your awesome witness. O God, we ask, Father, that you will just so pour out a mighty blessing upon us all today to fill our hearts, Lord, with your truth and with your love and with your grace. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we ask that you would just put your wisdom in us, Lord, more fully. Let it break out of us. Let us remember how Jesus walked, Lord. And let us remember that you have called us. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, even so send I you. Oh, God, keep us today. Lead us in the way everlasting. And crush the devil, the wicked, vile spirits under our feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today's message, the Lamb, the Great I Am. Hallelujah. Oh, the Holy Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Lamb of God, the precious Lamb, the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Precious land, you are worthy, Lord, of God that bore the sins of the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The precious blood of the Lamb, the precious blood of the Lamb that cleanses. Oh, yeah. From all sin. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The precious blood of the Lamb. The precious blood of the Lamb. That cleanses from all sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. You're so worthy. Amen. I'm going to tell you. We're going to say this. And this is the truth now. The lamb. The lamb. As a sheep. Let's look at Isaiah 53. Let me read this real quick. And this is important because. See God has called us. Jesus called us into his heart. He called us into his way. To be like him. And he's given us his life. In order that we can die so his life can live through us. And then we're reflecting Christ everywhere we go. Okay. Where Jesus is seen in us and not ourself. Okay. Not the self life. It says here. Verse 7 of Isaiah 53. He was oppressed. You ever been oppressed? And he was afflicted. You ever been afflicted? Mm -hmm. Yet he opened not his mouth. That's, that's where we got to get to. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's where we got to get to. We've been talking about walking the walk this week, you know, about identifying with the fact that Jesus has done the work. We have to die. We have to get out of the way, okay? And yet he opened not his mouth. The, this, this is the real key right here. Because there's a lot of instances in our in our walk, if you look back on your walk, when it would have been wiser for us if we would have just waited 
one more second, we might not have opened our mouth when we did. You see? And but the Lord knew that already. I mean, it's you can't go back and say, "Oh, you know, therefore I'm not going to make it or whatever." No, no, God's teaching us to walk in the way. When we get closer to Christ and we his life is flowing through us more, we're going to be exhibiting that. You know, it's going to be coming through that Jesus is the one. He's the one keeping us. Hallelujah. It's not us. Amen. It's not us. We can't do it. If you try to do it, what happens? It's religion. See? Well, it's that's the self life too to to try to do it. You right. know, it's that's like right. if God doesn't work it in us, it's just not done. That's all there is to it. Right. That's right. If he doesn't work that in us in a deep rooted way, <coughs> then it's not anything that's going to last. That's right. You know, you might try to do it on your own and, and say, I'm going to this and that. Well, go ahead. That might work for a little bit. It won't work long term that's if right. it's not worked in and rooted in mm -hmm. our lives. That's right. See, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says it twice in that verse. He opened not his mouth. Okay, the lamb speaks of submissiveness, of humility, of quietness. Okay, a little lamb don't make much noise. Okay, you understand? And John the Baptist, he saw Jesus. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. See, when I, when Abraham and the Father were speaking and Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and then God said, Make a sacrifice here, lay the pieces out. And he did. And then a deep darkness came on Abraham. And back in that day when you made a covenant with a friend or a neighbor, you you cut the sacrifice in half and both of you walk through it saying I will die to keep this covenant okay well Abraham was fast asleep a horror of great darkness came upon him and when he woke up there was a flaming torch going through the pieces God was walking through Abraham didn't walk through God said I will die to keep this covenant I will die to bring all of my people in mm -hmm. see the Lamb, Jesus. He came, saints. God sent His only begotten Son. God became a man. Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. Logos. Hallelujah. The Word became flesh. And tabernacle dwells among us. Hallelujah. And today, because we're born anew and filled with the Spirit of God, the Lamb has come in and taken possession of us. Hallelujah. Okay? So what is the problem? Why can't I walk in victory? Why? Because we are still not totally, completely, 100% surrendered. When you are tempted, you can surrender to God. See, you can submit to God and resist the devil and watch the devil flee. That's what Jesus did. See, Jesus was tempted. He was always being tempted. They were tempting him to try to get him to trip him up all the time. And he never fell one time. Why? Because he was submitted to the Father 100%. See? And that life, that power that he was that he was submitted, he gives to us Amen. to submit. We have to have faith. We have to believe. Praise God, man. That's the first thing on the list. <coughs> submit to God. Man. You can't resist the devil. If you're not submitting to God. That's right. That's the first thing. Submit to God. Right. Submit. To what he's saying. That's right. Submit. Obeying. What he's saying to do. If he's giving you a check in your spirit. Don't go over there. You better not go. That's right. If he's saying I don't want you around that person no more. You better not be around them no more. That's right. If he says I want you to sever ties. You better sever ties. Submit. That's the first thing. Submit to God. First thing. Yeah. And then what happens when you submit is you're, you got the power there then 
to resist the devil. Amen. Amen. And the third thing is he's got to flee. That's right. When you resist him after submitting to God, he's got to flee. That's right. And he will. He will. Mm -hmm. You know, you were saying there, and it just, it hits me that we have this power in us. Okay, I want you to think about this. The almighty creator of all things, Jehovah, the one who created everything visible from this realm where we sit. He created everything visible. All the stars, the whole universes, everything out of things which do not appear. The one who is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He knows all things. You think about, he knows every thought of every person that has ever lived and ever will live. And he knows all those thoughts at the same exact time. And he knows every motive. He knows everything. He's almighty God. This almighty God that we serve... Our holy living God. He lives inside of us. We are his temple. Amen. Okay. We are his temple. And I believe today the Lord wants us to look at the fact of the lamb. Okay. The lamb. Let's read in, Isaiah, in Revelation 5. <coughs> we're going to read about the lamb. And then we're going to identify this lamb. The great I am. Okay. He, he is the great I am. Is the lamb. It says in Psalm 113 that God has to humble himself to behold the things that are in heaven and the things that are in earth. He humbles himself to see the things in heaven and the things in earth, to behold them. Okay? Because he's such a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He humbled himself to say, let there be light. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says in Psalm 104 that God puts light on as a garment. We put clothes on in the morning. God puts light on as a garment. A light that will blind you instantly if he didn't keep you from being blinded. Mm -hmm. That's his covering. Okay? All right. So, so what is he like? If he puts light on as a garment. I mean, oh, we don't know. There is a mystery about God that we might never know. Okay? But we'll know him because we're going to see him as he is. And that's what he wants us to do today. See him as he is. Because then you're going to walk in more victory. Then you're going to walk in more power. Amen. And I'm it, telling you, I know it. It's so awesome. The Lord wants us to know him. To love him. To love him, to know him. And you know what? Hallelujah. No you, matter what the cost. Hallelujah. You look at his creation. Just look at his creation. This is just one example. <coughs> Pardon just, me. Just look at the little birds. Just look at all the colors. Look at a hummingbird, how the Lord made such a small little creature. And if you watch them, they're very territorial. It's like they get, you can just see them thinking, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's so awesome to watch them. And then the colors that God put on them, the irradiated colors right. on their little breasts, it's just, and their wings, you know. Just look at that one little creature. You see the and you handy think about, of the Lord. And think <laughs> about God and how infinite and mighty he is. But yet, look how tender he is and gentle he is in creating such a creature as that. Mm -hmm. Remember that time we were, I was in the shop on our land over in Oklahoma, remember? And a hummingbird flew in. And I said, Lord, please let me catch that hummingbird. I want to show Sharon. <laughs> so I got a stick and I put it up there. And, and that hummingbird landed on top of the stick. And I brought it down real slow. And I got it with my hand. And it was so, you couldn't even feel it, man. <laughs> and I said, Sharon, come here, check this out. And I opened up my hand. That hummingbird was sitting in my hand. And she was just like, wow. And then it flew off. And it was awesome, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And that was such a beautiful thing that God let me catch that hummingbird right in my hand. Mm -hmm. And... That's the loveliness of God, the, the gentleness of God that he could make us and we can we could actually get the hummingbird without killing it. Yeah. You know, it's so tiny. Well, he, he does things. It's just amazing how he speaks to us. You know, people say, well, I don't hear God. Really, you don't hear God when you look at his creation. 
you don't hear him when you look at the beauty and the colors and the birds and the ocean you don't hear his love in that Amen. when you read good his word, word you don't word. hear him oh, yes you hear him yeah. you know there's a false thing that people you know say if you don't hear audibly the voice of God then you don't hear God that's not true that's right you can hear God in every single thing in your life <laughs> you can see him in every single thing in your life you know he shows us and gives us little tokens all the time I remember that's you right. brought that up about our in Oklahoma our land there with that little hummingbird well I remember another time that the Lord was showing us things to come and in front of the shop, we went out and there was these honeybees oh, yeah. all over a big swarm. everywhere. Yeah. And there was a big swarm of honeybees right over the door of the shop, a big thing where they were gathering. But then you would look out further and here they were coming from miles and miles. I mean, just swarms of them coming there to the land, honeybees. The Lord Amen. was showing us even back then. I think we had already started the uh, Kings Road. Yeah, we had the Kings Road shortwave broadcast, right. broadcast going. That was before that, though. But yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. He was he, showing us. He was showing us. <coughs> That's when we had the final was call broadcast, I think. Because you know what? The Word of God is sweet. Amen. It is sweet. It's like honey to those that are craving after the truth. That's right. And they'll come from distances to listen to it. Amen. Just look at now. People all over the world are listening. Right. That's from right. different parts of the world are listening. Right. Because they want that honey. Sweet nectar the of The honey the Lord. of Hallelujah. God's word. Hallelujah. They want that. Right. And what does honey do too? It gives you energy. Right. It gives you strength. Now, let's remember, you know? too, because you say that, and it made me remember where in John, I mean, in Revelation 10, and then also in Ezekiel 3, you know, eat this roll, son of man. It was sweet. It was like honey. Mm -hmm. But then it made the, the boughs bitter. Because, see, God's word is it's a very trying mm -hmm. word. And mm -hmm. what is it trying? It's trying our flesh. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, hey, if you just jump up on the cross, hey. You just take up your cross and follow me, see, then you're in the will. You're in the will of the Father. And you're walking with him and talking with him and listening to him and obeying him. And he's blessing you and he's teaching you. And when you get up to the point, what I was just reading right here, and you got some opposition coming against you and people are bad mouthing you and doing all sorts of evil against you falsely for the sake of Christ, you leap for joy. See, you're like a lamb. You be quiet. You listen. Remember when that guy was coming against me and God told me, don't say one word, John. Mm -hmm. Don't say one word. And I didn't. Not one word. Remember? And what happened? That God, guy just God took left. Care of it. That guy took off. Yeah. Because God said, humility right. is the greatest force. Right. Hallelujah. Woo-wee! Praise God! You know, I was thinking of that uh, devotional, you know, I was thinking just then, you know, about the cross and preaching the cross. And what did Paul say? I don't preach any other gospel. Right. Except the cross. Christ That's right. crucified. That's, right. That's the gospel I preach. Amen. Well, how many of you are listening to other people that don't even preach about the cross at all? You better run if you're doing that. Because the true gospel is the preaching of the cross. Here's you know, and, and in this devotional, um, this is on the witness and testimony blog. Sharon put this up last night. Let me just read this, okay? okay. It says the cross of popular evangelicalism. The cross of pop popular evangelicalism is not the cross of the New Testament. It is rather a new bright ornament 
upon the bosom of a self-assured and carnal Christianity. The old cross slew men. The new cross entertains them. The old cross humbled men. The new cross amuses them. The old cross destroyed confidence in the flesh. The new cross encourages it. Encourages confidence in the flesh. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Mm -hmm. You can make it. Yeah. Okay. The old cross brought tears and blood. The new cross brings laughter. The flesh, smiling and confident, preaches and sings about the cross. Before that cross it bows, and toward that cross it points with carefully staged histrionics. But upon that cross it will not die. And the reproach of that cross it stubbornly refuses to bear. We must do something about the cross, and only one of two things we can do. Flee from it, or die upon it. The man who takes up the cross no longer controls his destiny. He lost control when he picked up his cross. That cross immediately became to him an all-absorbing interest, an overwhelming passion. No matter what he may desire to do, there is but one thing he can do, that is, move on toward the place of crucifixion. Galatians 6.14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. That's by A.W. Tozer. That's a good it's a powerful, like that. mm -hmm. powerful word because it's the <coughs> truth. It's Excuse the me. truth. It is the truth. Well, I like the part especially when it says you have to do something about this cross. You'll either flee from it or you'll die upon it. Mm -hmm. There's only one of two things. One of two things you can do. That's right. And that's what happens today. Now, in Revelation 5, we see the Lamb. Begin to read there, honey, in verse number 1, Revelation chapter 5. This is so powerful. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Oh, praise God. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, <coughs> who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Okay, nobody can do it, not one person. Okay, couldn't find anybody. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay. The lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay. Hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof the Lord God Almighty the Lord Jesus Christ amen verse he's six. worthy to open Let's the seven read it seals. read it and I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb stood a lamb as it had been slain Hallelujah. having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Now we know that Hallelujah. the number seven means perfection. Right, completion. And God is perfection. Now let's, let's talk about verse six a minute. And I beheld and lo in the midst of the throne. Now he, he, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he's the one. Okay. Now, how is this lion manifesting? How is all this power manifesting as a lamb? The Lamb. Okay. See, this is the greatest force and the greatest power in the universe. Humility. Humility. 
it defeats every demon it defeat it defeats all sin okay it defeated the devil hallelujah absolutely defeated the devil yes you know do you realize you. when jesus was on trial he didn't open his mouth until father said answer them and then he answered okay and the lord showed me he was hanging on the cross jesus was hanging on the cross and every breath he took it was like the pressure the enemy the devil lucifer he could feel the pressure just getting harder and harder and harder on his brain he was just being pushed down every breath jesus took just pushing him down just i mean about to just and then and then all of a sudden you hear the pharisees saying come down off that cross well come on down off that we'll believe you come on we'll believe you're the you're the son of god if you come down off the cross see because they were afraid see they were they were scared they were running then okay because he was hanging on the cross and he was dying he was giving his life a ransom for many he's the lamb of god and every breath and then when he took his last breath and he gave up the ghost he said it is finished bam he destroyed the works of the devil hallelujah because he didn't sin one single time he humbled himself as a lamb he is the lamb hallelujah as the father sent me so send i you saith the lord die to yourself saith the lord and that's an example as well that the pharisees said come down off that cross mm -hmm. and today they're and they're saying, doing the same thing today that's right, that's right. with god's true people Mm -hmm. come down off that cross you don't have to be a crucified vessel mm -mm. you don't have to go that direction that hard direction you don't have to go that way come here let me show you an easier way mm -hmm. let me show you an easier friendly way we'll treat you so many ways you got to like one of them Amen. you right. know That's right. yeah they're still wanting you to come down off the cross That's right. the devil hates the cross yeah. And you don't preach the cross either. So, but see, that's what the Lord <coughs> is constantly speaking is be crucified. Right. Okay? So, if you're listening to people that are not preaching that, that the cross is nowhere in their vocabulary of their gospel, then you got a wrong gospel. That's right. Okay? You're listening to a false gospel, and you better get out of it before you partake. In their judgment. That's, That's right. coming to the false teachers. That's right. See, the Lord constantly tells us, die to self. Die to self. Okay, self. Self. What we want. That's the self. What I want. The I. For your own self. Yeah. Now, God will give you desires, though. But, God gives you desires, but those are holy things. Right. But see, this church of today, they pump up the I. That's right. Okay? Self-sufficiency. Right. Building up the self so uh, that you can feel good about yourself. Right. The ego. You know. Yeah. That's what they do. And the Lord is doing the opposite. That's right. The Lord is showing us there's nothing good in yourself. Okay. Right. He said, die to yourself. The only thing good that's in us is Jesus Christ. Okay. And we die to self. And it, we learn how to more, more to do it every day. Right. Every this, day. This is what the Lord, as the Lamb, He's our example, right? That's right. Well, the Lamb... Look at verse 7. The lamb opened not his mouth through right. all that he went through. That's right. See? And plus, you know, that's also another uh, example for us that um, he didn't throw his pearls before the swine. That's part, I believe, that the reason that he didn't open his mouth. Part of the reason. Because he wasn't going to give them the precious things. Right. See, so he didn't open his mouth. He didn't revile back when they were doing all of what they were doing. Right. He had no malice in his heart. Right. He didn't have any malice, and he wasn't, you know, oh, the father's going to get you. Uh, you know, he wasn't like that. And w this is what we have to learn: is when we're opposed, when we're coming against, when pe people come against us, 
because what we're doing for the Lord, what he has us doing, he has us doing, then just be humble. Thank you, Jesus. Jump up and down for joy. Leap for joy, literally. And verse 7 says, And he came. Go ahead. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Okay, hold on. I'm going to look at that word took. He took, okay, to take, okay, to get hold of. See? Hallelujah. I don't, I don't think I read six. Yeah, you did. Go I ahead and did. read it again. Read okay. it again. Read it and again. I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Stood a lamb. Yeah, I did. As it had been slain, oh. having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And we know that horns represent power. power. Hallelujah. And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Yeah, see, they, they have these, they have these uh, golden vials, okay? Full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. That's us. We're the saints. Hallelujah. And right now, they're around the throne worshiping the Lamb. See? Right now, the 24 elders. Right now. I find it interesting when they said, And when he had taken the book. Now he's the only one that has the authority right. to open the book. That's we right. just read it. Right. There's nobody else that has the authority to open the book and the seven seals. But... Christ. Lord God Almighty, amen. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. And this is what I find interesting. And when he had taken the book, everybody fell down. Right. And worshipped him. That's right. Because they knew he's the authority. Amen. That's amen. God right there. Hallelujah. That is Jesus Christ. He is it. Amen. And they fell down and worshipped him. Hallelujah. Okay. With the incense and the instruments. That's right. Because they were letting him know, yes, you are the one. The one. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think Verse that's nine. pretty neat. Right? Amen. <laughs> Verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. Hallelujah. And to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain. And hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So okay, what, so see, we're redeemed by his life, right. by his blood, his life. That's what we're redeemed by. They're recognizing his sacrifice right oh, here hallelujah. in this verse. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, they're recognizing the sacrifice of the lamb and he is worthy. Look at this. What he went through, he is worthy Hallelujah! of this book. That's right. And Read. he's the only one that is. Praise God. Read verse 9 again and go straight into verse 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. Now, is that right now? Or is it after Jesus comes? Now. 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 Because we reign. he reigns in us. That's right. He's the one reigning. That's right. And here's when you read the story of Demetri Dudeman. He was, they had him, boy, they had him, boy. They knew he was doing, moving Bibles. They knew he was smuggling. And he would not tell them anything. God said, don't say anything. God told him. And this was right before he was fixing to go to America, about four years before. And he wouldn't say anything. He answered none of their questions. He had full control. And then when God killed that colonel that was going to, do him in. The colonel was about to kill him and God said that. He just they found him behind his desk, laid out dead. Then they, they let Dimitri go. And then four years later, the Lord showed him the day he was going to leave that country and go to America. And he he was on the 
he was out of there that very day. It took him like a year to get his passport together and everything, and God just opened the door, opened the door here, there. God, see, God total control over the whole communist system of Romania mm -hmm. back in 1986, 87. And Dimitri Dudeman Dim with his whole family got out, the whole family. And because they were going to try to just ship him off and keep his family here, but mm -hmm. it didn't happen because God was in control. Yeah, God's and he went to go get passports for his whole family. I forgot this part. And that guy said, no way. Ha, ha, ha. And he was laughing at him and everything. Da, 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 da. Ha, ha, ha. And then about a week later, he went back and that guy wasn't there anymore. There was a big scandal and God exposed all the evil that they were doing, the people that worked in the office, and they put new people in. <laughs> and Dimitri, he got the passports he needed. He got the slip of paper to take to the embassy, the United States embassy, to get the paperwork all together, see? Mm -hmm. And it took a while to get it all together, but God was ruling, yeah. see? I'm telling you right now, we are the victors. We are the ones ruling. Not not the world, not, not the way the world does things, but the way Jesus does. He is the victor, see? Vanya, man, I just can't get over how Vanya's life was so powerful. He was ruling, man. And everybody was flocking to Vanya, man. I mean, they were going right to him, man. Because the magnet of the, the truth of Almighty God, the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world, living inside of Vanya and expressing his life through Vanya. And it was just a magnet drawing in soldiers over here and over there. And those colonels and those... Uh, majors and sergeants, they just wanted to kill Vanya, but they couldn't. They couldn't touch him till his witness was done. Three and a half years he was a Christian. Three and a half years he testified for Christ. Okay? And then they finally, they tried to get him to recant and he wouldn't, and so they killed him. But not until Christ said so. Mm -hmm. See? And then after he was dead, oh man, they had to break up the whole unit, the whole base was dispersed. They sent one soldier over there and one over there, and they didn't know what they were doing, but they were taking <laughs> the story all over Russia, mm -hmm. see? See? That's what happened. Mm -hmm. Instead of keeping them all together, they sent one over there, one over there. I mean, all over. Spread the gospel. They spread the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> God used the communists to do that, see? Mm -hmm. And they don't even know it. This is the beauty of Christ. <laughs> He's in control of everything. Hallelujah. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. We say today, we are kings and priests unto our God, right? Amen. Okay. And we shall reign on the earth. Right. But they always put that in the future. No, right now we reign. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You'll find it out. Um, if you don't believe it right now, you will believe it. Because you're going to see a scene where all these people are offering, and you're going to step in. God's going to have, raise you up, and you're going to stand there and speak the word of God. And people are going to go, right, that's right, amen. And some people are going to grind their teeth, but they will not be able to touch you until God says so. Amen. And that's the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. And I beheld. Read it. And I heard the voice of many angels. Many angels. Round about the throne. And the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 10, and thousands, and thousands, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Okay, hallelujah. You know, I believe the Lord showed me one day that that's the seven spirits of God, okay? Power and riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. See, these are all the things the Father gives to us in Christ and through Christ, right? Seven. Amen. Seven. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, we receive power when we believe. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you submit and you get on the cross, you you have the power of God within you. Hallelujah. And the riches of heaven. Hallelujah. The riches. Amen. And the wisdom and of the God. And the wisdom of God. And, the, and strength. the strength of God to persevere another day. Hallelujah. And, and honor. honor. See? And glory. And glory. And blessing. And blessing. Oh, praise God. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. Heard I saying, blessing, blessing and, and honor, honor and glory and power. and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. 
and the twenty-four and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And it's saying everybody and right. everything <laughs> worshipped him. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Now let's look over here. I want to show you this. Some people don't believe in the divinity of Christ. Some people will say he was just a man. He was just a man. Okay. And God was working through him. Let me tell you something. He was a man. Fully human. And he operated through his humanity. His humanity. But what was operating? God was operating. He was 100% God and, and 100% man. man. Okay. If you deny the Son and his deity... Then you deny the Father, it says in 1 John. And okay? you're Antichrist. You That's have the right. Antichrist That's spirit right. if exactly. you do that. That's right. John eight fifty seven. This is after Jesus has rebuked the Pharisees. He's called them who they were, children of the devil. And they were accusing him. They were telling him he was born of the devil, born of fornication. Mm. Oh, they were telling him all this stuff. And Jesus rebuked them. Verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Okay? I am. Mm -hmm. See? He's the great I am. Hallelujah. Now, John chapter 5. Look at John chapter 5. John is such an awesome he was an awesome apostle. He loved the Lord so much. And he lived so long. Hallelujah. God gave him a long, long life. In John chapter 5, it says, verse 15, The man departed. He healed the guy by the pool. And told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. My father is working, and I work. See? This is what we need to remember this. You can't say that, Sharon. You can't speak like that, John. Oh, you know, you can't do that. You can't say, you can't treat us like that. My father said. See? This is what we say. My father said for me to tell you this. You see? Because he is our, we say he's our father, right? Amen. We say God speaks to us. Amen? Amen. Does God speak to you? Are you listening to me right now? You hearing the voice coming out of my mouth? This is John Farrell speaking to you. God says he speaks to us. Amen. Okay. He was speaking through Jesus right here. But not only was he speaking through Jesus, it was God standing right there in front of them speaking to them. My father worketh hitherto and I work. Therefore, the Jews sought to they sought the more to kill him. This is, what it, this is what happened. They sought the more to kill him. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Now, do we say we're one with Jesus? Amen? We're one. One body of Christ. Amen? Jesus Christ is what? The head. The head. And we are the body. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, this, there's a lot of truth here that we're speaking right now. Listen, the revelation is this. We must believe that it is Christ Jesus alone, his awesome Godhead, who he is, the divine nature of Jesus Christ living inside of us. We're still individual people with different personalities. Yes, that's right. But it is God Almighty operating through us. Amen. We, not, we need to remember this. There is a distinction made. Okay. We will always be creatures of God who were created by God to glorify God. Okay. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Okay. We were not conceived by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is very God and very man. Hallelujah. He is the Lamb. The great I am. He is the one who gives us the power to overcome. Hallelujah. Amen. It's by his blood. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Speak it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise his holy name. He is so worthy. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
praise his holy name now do you want to understand more fully how to walk with the Lord let me share with you the fact that you must continually cry out to God we all must Lord make me more like you father make me more like you Lord you do what you have to do to bring me to the place where I surrender more to you oh hallelujah 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 oh praise his holy name we thank you Jesus we glorify you we worship you Lord hallelujah Lord you are so worthy we just love you and praise you Lord and I pray Lord that this message has penetrated the hearts of those who hear it Lord I thank you Lord that you break through all the demonic hindrances that try to crush your word Lord from entering in taking good root in your people today and oh God I thank you that you have overcome Lord Jesus, you are have overcome you are the lamb slain from the foundation of the world we bless and praise your holy name Lord you said as the father sent me so send I you to be a witness to be a martyr I send you to witness unto the great truth I came to bear witness unto the truth therefore I send you to bear witness unto the truth hallelujah because as my father sent me so send I you the Father sent me to die. I'm sending you to die. Die to self. Take up your cross. Walk with me. Crush the devil's head. Hallelujah. And just demolish every work of darkness in and around you. Hallelujah. And just let the devil know that he's been put on notice. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We cast you out. Hallelujah. By the mighty blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The one who is our king. The one who is our creator. The one who is our deliverer. Hallelujah. The mighty Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, hallelujah, who has defeated the devil and defeated all works of darkness and rose from the dead, hallelujah. We bless you, Father, and we thank you, Lord, right now. Drive the enemy out, O God, hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name, by the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to the King, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If these messages are blessing you, please just feel free to write. If you want to write, you don't have to write, but if you want to, you can write to the King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. The King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. And the Lord bless and keep you. Make his holy face to shine upon you. Lift up his holy countenance on you. Grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you and fill you to overflowing. Hallelujah. With his presence. Hallelujah. His name, authority, and character being in upon your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.